Hi guys, this is Harry from Holistic Health, Harry and Alkalize to Realize show. Today we are joined by a very special guest, uh, Mr. Philip Wade. Now, Philip is experiment experientially realized the nature of the true self, which he refers to as infinite silence and shares this profound gift of the world through direct experience, spiritual inquiry, infinite touch, and via this website and other outlets. The sharing, has reached all con the sharing he's done has reached all continents and he has held events in the UK, Iceland, Greece, Corfu and Crete and Amsterdam. In his old life, he was a chartered civil engineer and director of a business. That was all left behind to focus on deep inner calling. In the process, he met Sue, his spiritual companion and wife. Their lives are totally transformed. So that was a quick introduction to you, Philip. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Good, it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so well, hi to you, Harry, and hi to everybody else who's uh, late listening. Mm, so that's very interesting from the, from the bio already. So we're talking about you, you put in the, put in old your old life. So I'd like to start by asking you a question of um, when you said old life. What when you're implying you've got a new life now? What happened? Did you have a spiritual transformation? Okay, so I th I think that probably goes. But often I'm asked this question, it probably goes back the kind of first indicator was probably in a i was actually on a skiing holiday in whistler on the west coast of canada in the year 2000 and in brief i w woke up one night after a hard day of skiing i was a really keen skier uh dreaming about work and i thought this has got to stop and what that briefly led to was uh, me met learning to meditate Mm -hmm. And I can absolutely committed to meditation. And the more I did that, the more the inner changes started to take place, became calmer inside. And sorry, my emails just clicked in there. I'm just going to uh, turn that off so that we quit mail. Yeah. And as that deepened, I, I committed to half an hour's meditation, no matter how busy my working life was absolutely committed mm. and started to open up into uh, alternative therapies whilst i was still working and things like that more and more transformations took place and about five years in i realized that my calling was now in a completely different direction and by 2009 i'd made the decision to leave that old life behind even though I was very successful, I left right at the peak of my career, having just turned a major business around because the calling inside was so strong. I didn't know fully what it was, but I just felt it. And a couple of years into that, m more and more major insight spiritual experiences started to unfold uh, in 2011. And the process kind of came to a peak in 2014 where in a very 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 deep meditative space the nature of the what i call the true self and many others have called this over a millennia was realized and in that process you could say there was no philip there was just simply awareness there wasn't even a body there was no awareness of but just complete awareness and that was all there was just awareness no thing that's interesting so and just absolute eternity you know that's what that's what and then somewhere in that process the words infinite silence that were in the introduction there mm -hmm. appeared out of nowhere and at that point this body that you're now looking at the awareness of it reappeared mm -hmm. And it was like everything had changed, but nothing had changed. And what I mean by that is that everything had changed in that who I thought I was, which was Philip, was now not really true anymore. Yes, the form of Philip was still here, but now the awareness of this infinite silence, the awareness that I was talking about, mm. um, it was absolutely crystal clear that I, in the non-personal sense, was that. But not only me that you know as Philip was that. In the everybody and everything is that as well. Mm. And that's that. From that point onwards, um, I'd already been starting to share some of this. It just accelerated, and 
there's been many, shall we say, messages, calls, insights, urges, mm. completely unexpected to just share this with people. That is um, very profound, very profound. Let me just, uh, one second. So you said about self-realization. That was an interesting word you said there. And, and I'm, I'm sure other people have an awareness of it. What is self-realization in terms of your definition of what you experience that and how you perceive it to be? Okay, so that's a good question because there's a quite a lot of confusion around the subject. Mm. And even in the words, in, indeed any words you use to describe this are ultimately limiting. They're only signposts or pointers. Mm. But when we talk about self-realization, we're not talking about a personal self, you know, know, knowing Philip better or knowing Harry better. What we're, the self here is what I call the capital S self. And this is a true non personal self and this self mm. the true self is simply just awareness mm. the buddha once was asked about this same question and by a sage of, or some guy of importance in that era and after asking him many questions he's uh, getting frustrated by that he said well what are you then and he said i am awareness and that's what we all are. And this awareness that referred to itself as infinite silence, that's what self-realization is. It's becoming aware that you are simply this awareness and that, yes, you may have this body. It's known as Harry. There's actually something greater that drives that, mm. that powers that. In, indeed powers the whole universe and it is in the realization the experiential realization of that that the suffering that comes with life is dropped because now you're not if you're not you're not disconnected from that which you really are that's very interesting so you're so um call me naive here but you're saying that suffering is determined by the fact that we identify with um my being harry as a human and you're identified as philip and you're saying that um when we realize ourselves we lose that is this a state that you lose 24 7 are you in this state 24 7 philip or is this just a momentary thing or is it this is a good question this is a really good question so the way that unfolds, it can tend to, the, the, the realization process typically can be a big pow experience for people, yeah. but usually it's kind of like it will be appear as crept up on you over a period of time when you look back at it. Yeah. The, the truth of the matter is that one is already this and it's already here, even if Harry doesn't know that yet. Yeah. Um, for me, the since that, date in 2014, the awareness that in truth, I am that, and the I I'm talking about here is the infinite I, mm. uh, that's been constant. Oh, okay. But what I would say, mm. just to clarify that a bit further, there's, there's like an integration, there has to be some, there's like an integration to process that takes place. It's like you, the physical body, mm having, should we say, lived at a certain level of awareness, should we say, prior to that, needs to adjust, shall we say, mm. to this um, new state, if we want to call it, or stateless state. Is world. that because you're like a baby, that you come, I feel like a baby, I guess it doesn't know the world. Is that kind of like it? You have to start? Um, it's, it can be referred to as a rebirth. Rebirth. Mm. Yeah, it can be referred to that being born again, but born as that which you truly are. Mm -hmm. For me, that was experience for the, for the body. It was like it was plugged into the electric mains for a couple of weeks. The vibration of it was so high. Mm. And it was like the body had to adjust to its new state of awareness, so to speak. And uh, so it was like if, you, if I had been plugged into the mains, that would be the way I'd describe it. And I actually got an insight at the time because I was like, look, the body awareness was going, well, what's going on here? Mm. And the message that came was that was this was life is death. And what that meant was it wasn't my body 
that was dying. It was the identity that thought it was Philip mm. that was dying. Yes. And, and so that was what was dying. Oh, I died, should we say. Mm. Uh, so basically that awareness has been constant, but we all, our bodies are only part of the picture. There's an energy, you know, there's a physical body, there's an energy body, there's an emotional body, and then there's levels above that. Mm -hmm. uh, and dependent on, should we say, how much emotional baggage we've all been carrying, that has to be cleared. So in the, what I call the anchoring in itself or as itself, um, if a lot of that emotional body has been cleared, then that process is fairly simple. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people can have a big awakening, mm -hmm. but are still troubled and they kind of like slip back. Okay. Mm -hmm. In my case, because I'd done a lot of work on it releasing, you know, sh should we say that baggage mm -hmm. and that identity, I would say it's been pretty constant, but there's definitely been an integration process. Mm. Um, uh, so occasionally in that last five years, there might have been some awareness of maybe something happened energetically in the body. It's like it's instantly seen by the silence, the awareness that I talked about, and it like it dissolves it instantly. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit like that. So that's partly what I'm talking about with the integration. Yeah. Um, but don't get me wrong here, you know, you still have a body, you still got to go to eat, you still got to go to the supermarket, do all those normal things and be a normal person. It's not about claiming perfection, it's mm -hmm. more about realizing and living from that space as to who you really are. Right. So it's not just a logical thing because I'm with you logically, but obviously I've not experienced this emotionally. However, um, me and my audience are very open minded and we're sure we, we understand what you're saying. So this sure. makes sense. And, um, you know, naively, I used to think it would be mean you would be blissed out 24 seven. But I think that's wrong. Would you be fair to say that you don't get blissed out 24 seven? It's not that kind of feeling. It's not is quite it? like that. No, because you see that experience of bliss mm. is is a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. So all emotions, whether you call it, you know, I'm happy, sad, joy, you know, all of these things, guilt, all these things, these are all phenom phenomena or phenomenal experience. Some of those we label as good and some of those we label as bad. And you might say, well, being blissed out 24 seven, you know, that would be quite a nice thing. But that in, in itself is a phenomenon. The actual realization of the self is beyond phenomena or before even the idea of phenomena mm. you you might try to use a word like oblivion or something like that to to describe it or point at it or signpost it but even that's not it mm. it is completely still mm. completely silent there's this sense of infinity or eternity but these are just words you know so it doesn't mean that this body doesn't experience sensations. It does. But it's not like, you know, I'm floating in the clouds 24-7. Right. I mean, know, yeah. Quite yeah. normally, I can go down the shops, drive a car, you know, live quite a normal yeah. life. Just one second. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm Okay, sorry about that. Yes, so you could live quite a normal life, right? Yes. Yeah, quite a normal life. You know, to, to most people, just, just be just some guy walking down the street, just like anybody else. Mm. Um, yet the awareness of this true self right. yeah. is, is a constant awareness, you know. Yeah. As, and as I say, it's not like one claims, one's claiming perfection. It's just that you realize that you are this, and all of that baggage that you were carrying around before um, just like falls away. And yeah. for me, that, a lot of that had happened in the process, in the lead up to it. Mm. Shall we say? Yeah. This is, this is fascinating, Philip. One second. I'm just getting no, you carry on. You carry on. So my next question is quite interesting too. Um, what's your opinion on why people suffer in, in this life? Um, because there's a lot of suffering in the world, right? I'm sure me and you can agree. 
Um, sure. So yeah. what is the root cause of suffering for you? So the root cause of suffering, all these things, by the way, become clear as part of the realization. And fundamentally, if you were to say what is the root cause of suffering, it basically boils down to what I call a case of mistaken identity. Okay. So we, we get born into this body, into this physical domain. And so let's take a baby, it gets, it gets born. You know how babies touch themselves and they're always like this, very tactile. When they're, and they, they sort of start to think, oh, I must be this body. And that gets reinforced by parents, by siblings, by teachers, by society in general. And what gets added in is a belief in that body and the story of the body. Okay. And with that comes a whole set of emotional experiences. Pretty much everybody on this planet will have had a set of traumatic experiences varying in degree to very extreme to quite mild in some cases but in each of them there's some there's a belief that i am this body and i am the story of the body and then you build up layer upon layer upon layer of identification attachment and belief with that story mm -hmm. and the thing about belief is that um, that creates what we call the ego the ego mind you know i am you know harry with this body this story with these beliefs these you know and these things make me happy and these things make me sad mm. life by its very nature is in the physical domain is constantly changing and what that's doing is creating challenges to ego mm. uh, because you know so let's give you a very simple example your, your football team wins and you're happy mm -hmm. Next time your football team loses and you're upset. All right, I see. You know, th th these are you know kind of simple examples, but apply that to any situation in life. Oh, such and such said something to me and it upset me. Mm. You, it's because the circumstances weren't as ego wanted them. Oh, and ego's your ego's trying to maintain happiness, a duality-based happiness of sorts, right? Yeah, it's trying to maintain its identity. Oh, maintain its identity, okay. Yeah, and what it does is it's constantly trying to hold on to its idea of itself mm. and its belief about itself, and it's constantly being challenged by the changing waves of life and all these other egos out there, some of which may be in agreement with it and some of which may challenge it. And so what you do is get this separation of appearance of duality consciousness. Mm. And this is a big challenge to ego because life is constantly changing. Mm. It's only when one reacquaints or re-identifies or remembers the nature of the true self, the unchanging essence, if, you, if I can refer to it that, that, that veil of suffering drops. So basically, the suffering comes from the case of mis mistaken identity that we call ego. Right. This yeah. is so powerful and interesting. I'm fascinated here. So um, how would you say that it's society, would you say society has melded this into us, um, this belief that you'd say is incorrect, that the ego belief, is this, is this I'm not saying who's to blame, I'm saying how does it get put upon us, this idea, the, all these false um, egos and beliefs? Where's it coming from? It comes from a number of sources. Basically, as you let's say one the the becomes manifest in the physical domain, there's almost like a forgetfulness that occurs as a result of that, which isn't needs to say about oh it's his fault there or her fault there or whatever. It kind of it it's like a thought becomes obsessed with itself. So the I thought. Mm the individual I thought becomes obsessed with itself and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you, you start to believe I am Harry mm -hmm. and I am these experiences. And then more and more, there's like a kind of unconscious game going on. Mm -hmm. It might start with parents, siblings, teachers, so forth. Adding weight to this idea that you're Harry 
and that you're good at this and that you're bad at this. You may be a good boy or you may be a bad, more and more stuff gets added. Mm -hmm. And it's like everybody's asleep. And so we're all doing this essentially to each other. I was going to say, so if everyone's asleep, how are we supposed to know an example of how to wake up? If all the examples around us are like, um, we think it's normal. Wouldn't we not think it's normal if everyone's the same ego identification? Yeah, so, so basically that's what has happens, it happens in the world, you know, is that this, um, the, this appearance of this asleep state that uh, occurs. And, and so we get battles going on between different belief systems. So I believe, I may believe this, you may believe that. And then we get, my belief is better than your belief. And then you get wars, you know, is the ultimate extreme of that. Mm. One belief system in fighting at an international level with another belief system, or it might just be a conflict with your best mate, you know. So this is all going on. And this is what is referred to as being asleep. You know, we're asleep. But the, the, the strange thing about it is that irrespective of that, the fact that, let's say, it appears that many people are asleep and that's why we've got so much strife and suffering in the world. The truth of the matter is, actually, we are all this realized essence already. And it's, a, it's actually a relatively simple matter to make the switch. But we're so bought into the belief in who we are, mm -hmm. it, it appears a very challenging thing oh. to do. Isn't that a paradox, what you just said there, kind of? You said it's yeah. very simple um, to switch, but at the same time, very challenging. How, how does yeah. that... But the reason it appears to be... I, I'm going to use the word appears to be challenging. Mm. The reason it appears to be challenging is because we're so bought in, you know, being there, done that, got the T-shirt kind of thing. Um, mm. We're bought into the belief system of who we think we are and that identity. Mm. And the one thing that ego mind doesn't want us to do is to let go of that identity. Mm. Its whole existence is bought into that identity. So if you've been in that body 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of investment in that identity. Mm. And the one thing ego mind doesn't want to do is let go of that. Because And the reason it doesn't want to let go of that is because it fears its own demise. Right. Yeah. The biggest fear that we all face is our demise. Mm. Um, and that's what ego is. And so it will do everything in its power mm. to try to prevent that happening. Mm. So that's why it's challenging because we're so identified with that. But it's also... in fundamentally it doesn't get any simpler than this and it's even mm. before the idea of simple mm. and the reason for that is actually you're already this this awareness right I hear. so like it appears that these two paradoxical states that exist uh one though is an illusion or an appearance that's not really true about you but it's certainly the experience don't get me wrong you know, there's many people who struggle with life and it's very challenging and I have great compassion for that. At the same time, there's this deep knowing that actually this essence that I talk about, the infinite silence, is there for everybody. It's not just, oh, Philip's a special guy, he's realized. It's not like that. Actually, we're all that. You know, I'm no different. In, to anybody else in that regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody once said to me, oh, you must be so much more spiritually developed than me. And I, I said, well, actually, no, that's wrong. Spiritually developed, that's an interesting term. Yeah, mm. yeah you know, that's actually, we are all this. Mm -hmm. It appears that you've forgotten. Yeah. And it is only an appearance, but it's certainly the experience of the majority of us. Mm. I mean it, this is fascinating can I ask you a question yeah. so yeah. Um, for someone that was interested in because um, it sounds it would sound ego I guess if I said that I would like to experience my true self but then yeah. part of me does want to experience it. I'm sure the audience does too how would one um, you said you went through meditation 
is there yeah. avenues of where we can start baby stepping this process? Cause I guess it won't happen tomorrow. Um, it's not going to be a quick thing. Okay. So here's, there's a number of, so whenever I hear somebody talk about that, what I start to hear is lots of beliefs and those beliefs mm -hmm. come from our, our, our conditioning, shall we say. Mm -hmm. but the, the strange thing is, and this might sound again, paradoxical to you mm -hmm. is actually it's here now and you are it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that stops it being realized is your identification, attachment, and belief in the idea that you're Harry. Mm. But if that was to go totally in this moment, dissolve, I use the word dissolve, but completely, utterly, totally yeah. dissolve, it would be what I call the greatest oh my God moment or oh my gosh moment in the universe. Because mm. you, you sort of go, wow how did i not see this you know how was this not seen yeah i'm hearing yeah. it however you know so and then people sort of say well how does this happen how do i become this and this is often referred to what's sometimes referred to as the pathless path mm -hmm. and the reason it's used those terms are used is actually you are already this and so there isn't our way there because you are already there so it's sometimes said you get there by realizing you are already there mm. but in practical terms for most people whilst certainly many people and there's quite an increasing amount have kind of spontaneous wakings who don't appear to be on any kind of spiritual path can have a spontaneous awakening it certainly happens so, some of those tend to be where they've had very very deep traumatic challenging experiences and then suddenly there's like this collapse of this identity mm -hmm. it's like a breakdown or breakthrough however more often than not it appears as though there's a journey unfolding you can get like so like in, you know, in the case of what appeared to be Philip, you know, a commitment to meditating, deepening, 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 more and more awarenesses, more and more baggage being released. Mm. Um, and then one day unexpectedly, it kind of all, that's it. Wow. And then what went before, it almost seems like an illusion. You know, I can remember, I can remember Mm. but it's like it's a there's a certain sense of unreality about it mm. Mm. but it's not but it's not decrying it you know it's not like that it was a beautiful journey mm. so oh. you appreciate you, you you remember it as a memory a fond memory not like a oh this was my old me and now i'm you know no so no no for me it, you know everything that has been experienced in this form mm. you could say has brought it to this space and so for me, there's, there's no regrets um, about anything, even the, the, and you know, I had some challenging experiences, even those were all part of that process. So, so in terms of, you know, how do you get there? Well, first, be open to the possibility, in fact, the truth, but don't believe me on this, absolutely don't, but that it's here now and you are this in the non-personal sense critical that one secondly in that opening to that commit to following your heart okay. mm -hmm. if you commit to meditation this is the age old you know in many spiritual traditions uh, is the age old pathless path because meditation starts as something that you do you know, so I'll sit down and meditate half an hour a day. Philip did that, mm. you know, 20 years ago. Uh, he committed to that totally. Even with a 60 or 70 hour working week, he still did that. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. And that what, that what then happened is, oh, it appeared over time, you become, you know, something meditation that you, that you do, it becomes something that you are. Mm, okay, I hear you. Yeah. Become a living meditation. So if you're, if if life is a struggle for you at the moment, 
be open to the possibility that actually this essence is here now and it is you and you are worthy of that more than the idea of worthy and commit to following your heart commit to meditation this will help this will help this is uh, really fascinating philip really fascinating let me get the next question sure sure yes so here's a key one so yeah. you're, you're on a mission right now and um i've seen your youtube and we'll talk about that at the end but um what and you do a lot of lives too what's and you've got your own website we'll talk about this in a bit but what is your um why do you do what you do why, why are you committed to do you because you feel pretty determined and committed what drives you to carry on doing what you're doing um, yeah this, this question comes up from time to time and it's actually something that's been in the awareness really back from 2011 i remember around 2011 when the first really major experience i remember my wife asking you know why do you do this and i put i thought what a great question and i paused and i just went silent within closed my eyes and what it's, it's bursting out of me was what the words that i used it's bursting out of me since then that same question has popped up uh, shall we say in various forms and you know what is it that drives this you know and the words that came in a deep meditation was this it was a, a compelling compassion and what that means is it's this inner compelling that comes from the awareness itself on behalf of the awareness not personal not from here you know but from in here in the heart but it, it sees so to speak if i can describe to you the suffering that takes place and it's like an it's like a, an invitation that's being created uh from itself to itself to say hey you know here we are and we are this not I am better than you and you know you you're you're asleep and you know it's not like that it's like it's here and it's here for us all and it's that that drives it um it doesn't come from here even my website which you mentioned the domain name for that I was actually given that in a meditation seven years before the realization Wow. And I wondered what on earth I was supposed to do with it. And I didn't realize what I was supposed to do with it until seven years later. <laughs> so the, what drives it is this compelling compassion. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like, it's like this invitation that comes from within. And what I find is that I feel like I do an event I often ask people, why do they come? And in various ways, everybody says the same thing. They all say, I just felt I needed to be here. And it wasn't because of me, you know, that which you perceive to be Philip, you know, he's a good guy kind of thing, that kind of thing. It's not like that. What it is, they're recognizing something within themselves that's calling them to open to that. And for me, there's no greater joy than that, seeing that kind of light up, you know, when people have these aha, aha moments, these awarenesses, or quite often I see massive emotional releases of baggage quite spontaneously. So these are the kind of things that the compelling compassion is, is what drives it. Yeah. Oh. And um, this is fascinating. Um, so, so people, are, you've seen release emotional baggages. Have you? I know this is might be my ego talking here, but have you seen? Um, have you seen people experience the same thing as you? Those moments of permanent shifts yourself, or is it? Is it quite something that you walk around and unfortunately everyone's at their journeys, but no one's at that level yet? Is that some experience? Uh, actually, I have good news there. I've actually, I would say that um, over the years, I've watched. You know, many, many people have come to events, shared with many people. Some have sort of really committed to that. And I would say uh, I can, without naming names, uh, of, there's definitely uh, people I know 
that I have met who have been to events and stuff like that, who have definitely realized this essence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they are, you know, in their own unique way, because the, what I described happened here mm. will happen in a different way to somebody else. Yet the awareness, the realization is the same. I see. Yeah. And that is incredible and beautiful. And the good news is that, is that I, what I see, is, uh, and I mean that, you know, from this experience here, uh, that is accelerating at quite a rate at the moment. Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's a ref, probably a reflection of the change mm -hmm. that are taking place globally, not just, you know, in individuals, but globally. So, yeah, I've definitely seen, uh, you know, some people are kind of, moving along the path gently but others have had deep realizations mm. yeah i find this fascinating and i guess as someone i'm um, very uh, with awareness can you are you able to calibrate from the person um based on do you know what i mean like you can tell someone's at a, um, a stage where they're just very near a breakthrough or they're at a very beginning stage are you able to give them the right information the seeds put the seeds in calibrate for the person yeah i see what you're saying but let me just clarify something to sort of answer that mm. question more fully. So, Whilst I might see, you know, let's say I'm at an event and a group of people and, you know, I can see their form uh, and, you know, the, there's men and there's women there and so forth. And, and I can see the issues that they're bringing. I ask people to bring questions along to an event. Um, I can see all that and I can see where they're struggling and I can see the over. But why my focus really is, is on who they really are. Okay. Even while talking to you here now, I know that your name's Harry uh, and that you, you're doing this interview and so forth. But I also know that you are this as well. Mm -hmm. So my focus is on that. Yet also to answer your question about you, it, it's obvious by the way someone is communicating whether a realization a deep realization has happened you can tell mm. but it's equally also by the way somebody articulates or expresses a question whether you know where it is that they're suffering or struggling yeah. uh, well, i don't see oh she's better because you know she's it's not like that you know it's not about there's no such thing as better or worse or whatever we're all this we're all this mm -hmm. and so for me i see no difference whether you're the buddha mm -hmm. or you know the president of the united states or a person who sweeps the streets to me it's all the same we're all this this is fascinating but you can see mm -hmm. you know where the the overlay shall we say of the ego that's obvious but that's not where the focus is. Yeah. Wow, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, can I ask you, it might be quite a personal question, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. So um, are you afraid of death? And what what is um, your opinion of, um, what, do we have other lives or are we just, is this um, one that's going to carry on after you die in your opinion? Or is, is there a truth? Is there a truth that we're missing that you could enlighten us with? Okay, so am I afraid of death was the first question, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the release of this fear of death is a key part of the realization. You know, I said earlier about the ego fears its demise. Mm. It manifests that as a fear of the death of this body. Mm. So if you like, part of the portal, if, if we can use that word that you pass through, is the release of this fear of this body dying. Mm. That's part of the, it, it, it's part of what's called the gateless gate. And it's called gateless because you are already this. Uh, so but it, it's like a kind of a passing through of that. Um, so the short answer is no, there is no fear of death because the awareness is I, I am this and this I is the infinite I. And it's also you are that too. You know, there is no difference. So no, no fear of death of this body. The, 
Um, so what was the other part? It was just remember and, me. Um, do you believe um, you said infinite? Oh, yeah. I was going to ask. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So do we carry on? So as part of that awareness, that should we say experiencing or awareness of that, it was what I, I sometimes refer to as this way: truth is self-evident. And what this is the big S self, uh, and it becomes evident that not, not only one is this awareness, but that this awareness is eternal. Mm. I, I, it knows no time bound. In other words, it's not it's not bound by past, present, and future. It simply is, and it's eternally this, and it's, it becomes clear that one. If we were to use the illusion of time, I'll put it that way, then one always was this, one is this, and will always be that. Because in human terms, we measure things in linear time. Actually, time is an illusion, and it's just this, and it's always just this. It's always, and so, then you asked about kind of like a reincarnation type question. So to look, to explore that, this is talked about in various traditions, you know, rebirth and so forth, the cycle. The way I articulate that is that basically what happens with the egoic identity is what I call, a, it becomes a thought that becomes a belief that's obsessed with itself. And this cycle continues through the life in the form and that thought and belief will continue until it dissolves by the power of the awareness now some would say that, that then so that would then point you towards well i've lived this past life and i've got these future lives and all the rest of it but actually i would say the awareness is that actually it's all here now and it's what it is it's the dissolution of that belief thought that creates the realization yeah. yet in human terms we might say well you know i lived a life in a different body and then another body and then another body until the realization occurred but the awareness as it revealed itself was that actually all of it all of it even what you thought to be past life is all here now it's a matter of where your focus is placed sometimes use a metaphor to describe this so you can imagine a library a huge universal size a massive library and that's the whole universe and you might go into the library and focus on one book and it's the life of harry yeah and that's his life and then you look open at a book at a particular page and this is one chapter in Harry's life. Then you look at that page and there's one element of that chapter. Then you look at one line and that's one detail. And you go deeper and deeper and deeper into various facets, into more and more refined. But the whole universe is still here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it just appears you're living this life as Harry wow. and living this life as Philip. Mm. But as the realization flowers, it becomes obvious that Yes, this body is here. It's great. It's a great gift from life unto life. Mm. But now it is realized that actually you're just awareness. And all of this is like, we talk about these days, virtual reality. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about virtual reality, isn't there? Mm. You know the greatest virtual reality game? It's life? this one. It's oh. this one. Okay, yeah, that. <laughs> well, I like that. I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, three dimensional virtual reality. Here it is. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And we're like plugged, it's a loose analogy of trying to make sense of it again. So I'm plugged in, um, like um, I've got something over my eyes. You know, there's virtual reality sets when all I need yeah. to do is take off my virtual reality set, um, yes. which is holding me back, and then I can see everything. But I've got it on, but I'm not aware that I. I've got some beliefs that are blocking me from Correct. taking off these, um, these, uh, into seeing the whole universe around me. I can't see it because yeah, yeah, yeah. from this point yeah. of view. Yeah, it's like you went, as you, you said, that's a good way of putting it. So you've got these glasses, or I sometimes call it as the cloudy lens of ego. You're looking through this lens. At, at, and so that lens that you're looking through is through the lens of beliefs. 
and it's scratch and a bit cloudy. But when one looks from, shall we say, the heart space, and I don't just mean the physical heart, I kind of mean like the, I'm using it as a metaphor for the whole universe, then the seeing becomes clear. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. I call it the eyes that truly see. Yeah. And you could also say when it is realized, mm -hmm. it is, it's with the real eyes. Mm. And our show is Our Lies to Realize, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you'd quite like that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like... And it's, it's like, you know, you, you don't get there from, you don't, one doesn't think one's way to realization. One is the realization. Mm, yeah. Mm. If that makes sense to you, you know, it's not like, how do I get there? You know, I'm going to strive along this path. Yes. yes. It's like mm. it's opening to that one is this, mm. one is this. This is fascinating to me because I'm that personality you just described. I'll be honest, I'm, my personality is very much, um, uh, discipline, but also I need to get there. I need to run away. So can I ask you for just a quick one of, for, for my struggles? I'll be open to you and to the audience. Um, so I just said I struggle um, quite a lot with, um, I think, being present to the moment. And I have a very strong ego, which I use for the benefit. I, I try my best. I'm trying to, I don't know, to, to reduce it and to, I really do. This is the wrong thing to say, I guess, but I, I want to experience um, the realities of life. Now I'm okay with not experiencing what you've experienced um that's fine but how would someone like me who's very much you know like trying too hard how yeah. how would i go about doing this um is there any uh yeah so this striving so mm. what you're talking about there is like a kind of striving been there by the way you know achiever mm. achiever quite a lot of strong determination uh you know and actually this is something that is drilled into many of us uh from um a young age uh, and this is something that you see sort of striving towards because basically what ego does is it's it's time based and it's goal bound mm, yeah it's like oh i would like to be a spiritually realized master you know yeah. uh, in by 20 good. by 2020 say let's just mm. do <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that because making it a goal mm. actually pushes it away from you Okay. The reason that is the case is because you are already this. And so you can't actually strive towards it. <laughs> already here. Well, already. This, this is, uh, you're, you're right, but that's so, that's, I'm so, my ego's like, oh, damn, <laughs> what am I going to do? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does that. And it does that. And it goes, oh, my God, he's on to me now, kind of thing. Yeah. So, so, but anyway, there's nothing bad or good or whatever you know this is the, what you're, is being experienced and it's not about invalidating experience the experience is the experience mm -hmm. so the key is you know what is it that's driving this need to strive towards something you know achieve and what usually is, is pushing that is this desire to you know prove oneself yeah uh, because at the core of all of us until you know the realization is fully flowered there's an experience that i call uh, what we and it's a, a false belief we have about ourselves which is this idea of core unworthiness you know there's like and, and it's, a, it's actually an illusion but it's a very very powerful and persistent illusion and so, some, so we kind of go through thinking, ah, well, if I achieve this, I'll, be, I'll better myself. Mm. But there is no bettering of who you really are. Mm. You know, you're perfect and whole, and that's what I see. You're already this. Um, so as for somebody like you who's striving and achieving, and you're probably quite busy, I guess, as a result of that, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes, yeah. A, bit, a busy person because we tend to fill our lives with busyness yeah e ego yeah. at the end of the day isn't it i've got yeah, to keep this i've yeah. got to do this i've got to keep doing stuff yeah more more stuff to do stuff to do stuff to do mm. so a key thing for you and definitely was like that in you know through 20 
2000 uh, and for a good period afterwards as well, by the way, mm. um, you know, been there, got the t-shirt. <laughs> the um, a key thing is to stop. And when I mean stop, I mean stop, be present, commit, let's say, to, to a practice that is heart-based for you. You know, what makes your heart sink? Is that sitting down and meditating? Maybe that's a good thing. If that's difficult right now, something that your heart really calls you to, you know, that really brings your heart joy and commit to that as a practice and keep on following your heart, keep on following your heart. Take time each day mm. to listen. What is my heart calling me to do? right now close your eyes listen keep following that message mind might come in and go harry but harry if you do that you won't get that job done today <laughs> you've got that washing to do or you've got that interview to do or you've got you know any number of other things that you're supposed to have done mm. but your heart's going actually you know what i'd really like to do this for the next half an hour so commit to that calling if you can commit to a meditation, because what a meditation will do, it will feel like a practice at first. And if you've not done much of it at first, it may feel like an effort. Is this a breath work meditation? You're focusing on breath or any, anything? Uh, the meditation I do is what's called the infinite silence meditation. It's a very simple meditation. Mm -hmm. And unlike many meditations which engage mind, this meditation bypasses all of that and brings you straight to an awareness space mm. and what that um so if you use that meditation I'm not, uh, it's, you know it's not, there's many meditations out there but what you're basically doing with any meditation is stilling yourself you're becoming quiet so that you become the meditation mm. and by committing to that stilling, what you're going to be able to do is hear from inside what it is that you're really being called to. At the moment, most of us go around listening to what's going on up here in our heads. And that's usually should, must, ought to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And heart is going inviting, uplifting, inspiring lighter, expansive. It feels very different in your body. Excuse me, I've got a fly there. You want to go with the inviting, the uplifting, the inspiring, the heart calling. Mm. And if you can commit to a, a meditation, an awareness meditation, mm. and your listeners, I can, I'll give you a link for that later. Yes, please do. Yeah. Um, then, you know, that's a, a good step to take. And by totally committing to that, you're going to be, become stiller, become quieter, mm. and you're going to start opening to things that you hadn't realized about that which is here. Mm. You're just going to go on this amazing, what will appear to be a journey to mm. open up to yourself. Philip, this is fascinating. I have a question. Um, um, uh, I don't know your opinion on this too. So I, have you heard of this Vipassana meditation? Vipassana? I have. Of it. I don't know much about it, but carry on. Yeah. Well, um, the Buddha discovered uh, the Vipassana meditation, and what he did was he sat still apparently for a very long period of time. And I tried this too, and I noticed when I um, before I go to bed, if I stay completely still, I mean no fidgeting at all, um, for like an hour or two, my activation in my heart and my breath slows down and my mind goes quiet. So I'm wondering if that's also a good way to um, Im improve my um, compassion. Um, to activate the heart space by stilling the body. Uh, is that possible? Yeah, definitely it is. I mean, what you've just described is exactly what I'm talking about. Because if you're sitting still, um, you know, no activity going on, it's inevitable that the body will calm down, the mind will still, and you'll get into, you'll move away from identification with the thought space that's going on in here and you'll come more into your heart, and you'll probably notice a physical benefit from that. It will feel lighter. 
Yes. Your... Um, yes. The body starts getting, actually, I, I get a pains in my body. Like it's trying to resist like my, I don't know if this is true. It feels like my ego is trying to resist the moment. So it gives me pains, which I feel are not real. I see that the pains is an illusion by my ego to stop me from doing it. Correct. So it gets really painful. Correct. And that exactly that. So that's a good aware. That's a really good awareness. So basically the more you still into this truth, one of the things that comes with that, which people get confused about and puts people off is all that you are not all the resistance that you've built up <laughs> that will come to the surface. Okay. Yeah. Now, the key then is not to be frightened by that mm. or, or run away from that. It's to let that be there without any judgment. You know, yeah, whether it's painful. It's, if, my, if my body's screaming in pain, which it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's screaming in pain, if it's emotional, fearful, any number of sensations, just watch that, witness it. I call the word witness. In the knowing that that's not ultimately true about who you are. This is very important, this bit. Mm -hmm. I have a specific meditation for this. And as you watch silently, accepting and not judging what's going on in the body, what you'll find, and you may have experienced this, is it passes. Yep. It, yep. It, after some time, after just simply watching, it just disappears. Yep. Of its own accord, without any effort mm. on your I call this effortless grace. Mm. And as what's happening there is the power of awareness is at work. So you're, you're trusting in this awareness. You're silently watching. There's all this noise going on in the body, this pain, this anxiety, fear, or whatever it happens to be. But because you're not buying into it, you're not purchasing it, saying I'll have some more of that, you're, not, you're just simply watching. What happens is it transmutes, it tra transforms, it dissolves. It's a bit like, I sometimes describe it like an ice cube. You get it in a glass of water. Now the water is like awareness. It's an ocean of silence. And just effortlessly with this ice cube in this glass of water, the ice is going to dissolve. And that's the pain body, what Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body, the identification the ego. And that will manifest as physical pain, emotional stuff like that. Mm. But as you trust in the, the water, the awareness, the, the silence, automatically the ice dissolves, 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 dissolves until there's no more ice and it becomes the water. And that's a good metaphor for the realization of the self. It never was, the ice never was ice. It was just water. It was just ice. A, a, sorry, water appearing as ice. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you're doing that an hour before you go to bed, mm. fanta that to me is a fantastic meditation. Mm. I did it. I did it for other reasons. I mean, I did it for health reasons. So I noticed health benefits. But now I'm starting to see from what you're saying, and the the that it might more be more than just health benefits. It might be uh, some kind of a heart activation and um, uh, heart space and all the things you said. Absolutely, it will. You will not only get health benefits from it. You will get the health benefits. Interestingly, are a consequence of the spiritual benefits. Oh. They're not separate. Mm. So your body will not only feel more relaxed, it will feel more energized. It will, you know, there'll be less stresses, you know, from a health perspective. But actually what's happening there is your awareness is deepening. And the more that you trust that silence, that inner stillness, the mm. infinite silence, mm. that you move to what I call the highest form of trust. And that is not having to trust at all. Because, and that's basically means you are the, the awareness, the knowing. Wow. Yeah. You move from trust into awareness, into knowingness. Not of things like this is a glass, just awareness of itself as awareness. If, you, if, you, if, you could, if I could use that as a way of describing it. So what you're feeling in your body, that stilling, that calming, which you, 
you're currently putting down as health benefits yeah that's fantastic but there's more than even that going on mm -hmm. there's a what you're deepening into is who you really are oh wow keep going <laughs> yeah, we are, this is a fascinating for me and guys should look into it can i ask you one last question before we get to um your internet site and everything so do you think that humans have been put here to experience a playground of duality and it's our mission to wake up and see ourselves as we really are is that is that why we are here in your opinion or is it just um it why is why is the universe of infinite conscious playing around um and you with this uh this duality <laughs> This is almost like the, the kind of the impossible question to answer. You know, um, you know like it, uh, this is like the, the key one. But let, let me sort of offer something from, let's see how things unfolded. And because that is the best, most effective way to sort of offer something here. So I said earlier that as the realization flowers, there's just there's this, this awareness. For, for me, that's what it was. There was nothing, no thing. But even that is a word, you know, to try to point at it. Mm. Yeah. And so there were no phenomena in the traditional sense. There was no body, no Philip, nothing, just, just eternity. What, as the words infinite silence came, there was an, it's like what would be called a choice you could call it this, to, it makes to experience itself. So you could say the universe chooses. So it's you, you like might, a mirror, like a, to see itself. Yeah, to, to see itself or to experience itself. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it kind of like, one could say it creates this first, what I call beingness, the pure state I am, or spheres of light was how it came to me. It's just a, just a name for the I am state but not a personal I am. And then within that, you get form, your bodies, physical things. And this is the triality of consciousness. You know, they're, all, they're not separate, they're one. You know, the silence, spheres of light are I am and form. And this triality experiences itself. And so it, it has then the phenomenal world is there experiencing itself. And, and that gets lost in that experiencing process. And then a process of remembering appears to take place. And it's all an appearance because it's all here and it's all here now. And there's, and there's nothing separate from this. So you could say it's like the universe is choosing to experience itself as itself as this yeah um and in that we get a little bit lost we become the thought obsessed with ourselves until we don't all right yeah yeah so you know that's kind of a way of looking at it um you know it's, it's like a, a a choice to experience itself then it's like a choiceless choice to realize itself mm. the beauty of mm the realization in the physical form of the non-personal self is that you get to, should we say, experience that or become aware of that. And then life becomes a more flowing or harmonious arrangement. Yeah. Right. Does that, does that help you? Yeah. Yes. That is, um, resonates strongly. And I was thinking while you were talking there, you were making me think, well, I'm just asking a thought about what is life after death. And these are all thoughts which are yeah. manifested through the ego, which is not the reality of actually who we are. So, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. So you could say, sometimes I put it this way, the universe, with, but if I spell universe Y-O-U, mm. meaning the, the ego self, the universe, Y-O-U universe, is a thought obsessed with itself. Mm. And when the thought stops being obsessed with itself, the belief is dropped, in other words the belief in the thought is dropped, then the big S self mm. is realized to have always been here and it is not separate from what's here now. <laughs> and that's why it's so simple. And it's so mind bogglingly simple that mind goes, oh my God, it can't be that simple, but actually <laughs> it is. <laughs> 
Philip, this has been an absolutely fascinating talk. Absolute pleasure. I'm sure the audience has got a lot of value out of this. Before we leave, though, can we ask you um, for, um, could you tell us your website? You have a YouTube as well. And also run quickly through what you're doing with your house. And um, if you don't mind, the meditation things you... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah, basically I have a website that I mentioned earlier and the domain name for that came seven years before the realization and that domain name is quite interesting in itself. It's actually called gatewaylocation.org and what it, that basically is a point, that in itself is a pointing. The gateway and the location of that essence is you. Mm but not the personal you. So the website, gatewaylocation.org. Mm -hmm. uh, on that is a very big website. Got a ton of free resources. There's about 32, I think, live streams or 31 live streams. Um, there's many other videos. There's about a couple of hundred spiritual insights on virtually any subject you care to think of. Uh, so that's a massive resource pool that's completely free for people to use and on that site as well as on the youtube channel you'll find what i refer to as the infinite silence meditation it's in many places mm -hmm. if you go to the header bar you'll find it there but you'll find it on um various other very various other places as well and that's a 30 minute experience with me Initially, what appears to be guiding you or pointing you into the silence and I sit there with you and then I finish off that meditation. So that's the web, main website, gatewaylocation.org. I think you said this stream goes live a month or two's time, so that's fine. By that time that your audience sees this, there'll be another website that sits alongside that. Cool. And that's called staroflight.org of light dog what that is is a sister site to the main site and what it does it'll be four pages there'll be a home page and three other pages uh, but on those three pages are the and this became as an, an insight as well the domain and the three pages uh, the three kind of main experiences i use with people when i do an event there's a, what I call the spheres of light meditation, which was the first stage for me in 2011. Very simple meditation, very powerful, very brief, only five minutes. There are longer versions you can use or you can pause the meditation. That's one of the pages. There's a page called Alchemy of the Spirit. That's the witnessing I've just talked to you about, the transmuting fear into love. And there's a whole stream, live stream, dedicated to that witnessing process of clearing the baggage and then thirdly there's what's called the open gaze meditation mm -hmm. which was something that came as an unexpected insight where i simply guide people into the silence and then look at them in their physical eyes and you look at mine but the looking is coming from the silence and this has been very very powerful for a lot of people so that site will be live by the time your audience gets this. Is that a free website, is that a free website too? Free, free, yeah. People can donate if they want to on any of these sites cool. um, to help spread the word, but they're free. Mm -hmm. And then the other bit, you can connect with me on Facebook and uh, my page is Philip Wade, Infinite Silence Self-Realization. Mm -hmm. Philip Wade, Infinite Silence Self-Realization self-realization and then also the youtube channel which supports the websites if you just google on youtube um philip wade infinite silence you'll find my channel and there it is so all these resources are freely available to anybody you can share them do what you like uh, and if people want to donate that's great but, but they're there for the world basically that's awesome. And lastly, before we leave, um, you're going to open up, you will talk about retreat. You don't have to. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. So you mentioned about this place. So at home, uh, I've run events at many places, as we talked about in the introductory, mm -hmm. many in the UK, but also overseas. But at home, one of the insights that came a few years ago was to build a meditation center. So we have in what was our annex, we demolished it and built this beautiful oak framed uh, and glass paneled 
with pyramidal roof and glass roof lantern meditation space that will hold a workshop for about 20 to 30 people and that will be available to people to come to events um, probably from early July. Oh wow, that's not long away at all then. Yeah, we've got that, that that's work is being finished at the moment. The garden is to be done because it's been wrecked by the building work. Mm. But the actual space should be available from about the end of July. And how do people sign up with that then? How would people yeah, sign up? Look work? on the main site, on the oh, main site. On the main site. Mm. Yeah, there's, it, there's like an events section. And um, if there's an event here, that'll be advertised on the site. Mm. And it'll take you to the uh, shop part of the site where you can make a donation to come to an event. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, good. Philip, um, just a quick um, conclusion. Thank you very much for being with us today. Is there any last message you'd like to leave people with um, before we depart? Um, or have we covered all the bases for you? I think the message I would like to say is, first of all, thank you to you and Alkalize to Realize for holding the interview. It's a great opportunity. I'm very grateful. It's lovely to hear your questions because I think they've been very open and very natural. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to say thank you to you and to everybody listening for taking the time to listen. And if there was a parting message is, it would be, you know, be open to that which you already are because it really is beautiful beyond words mm. yeah awesome. just be open to that just feel that within your heart be open to the truth of that it will change your life whether you come to an event with me or do anything else doesn't really matter just be open to that truth within you that's my parting message Wow, that's deep and profound. Okay, uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, Philip, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for your wisdom and, and persisting with my um, open-mindedness, a little bit of naivety too, not gonna lie. So yes, I, I wish you all the best by the way. And hopefully I, I'm very interested myself. So I might see you, very well see you um, down at the retreat some point um, in the future. I'd like to meet up with you too. And um, I would like to learn basically. So yes. <laughs> yeah, well, if you feel called, do have a look at the site and you know uh you, you can contact me there or a messenger or whatever you know yes it, it, it really has been a pleasure you know it really has yeah okay thank you guys okay. and thank you for it.